Hey, today is Friday, March 17th, and I am Pastor Connie. You know that already. This is Phil Kuhn. You know that already. Billy's behind the controls. You know that already. But what you probably don't know is all the great news that we have for them, Phil. So um, why don't you kick us off and tell the good folks what we got today. That's right, Pastor. On today's 411, we have some reminders about upcoming events, information about our upcoming services, a visit from Heather, some good news, and announcements. This is the fourth Sunday in Lent in our series, His Prayer, Our Prayer Continues. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven is the petition that you'll be focusing on this Sunday, Pastor. What teasers do you have for us regarding your message? Well, thy will be done. Uh, interesting petition in the Lord's Prayer uh, because we prayed, as you will know, but sometimes our lips pray that thy will be done, but sometimes our wills, pardon my pun there, want to do our will. And we need to focus on Jesus, um, especially in the garden. When he's in the garden and they're about to come to, to get him, to crucify him, and he says to God, God, Father, let this cup pass from me, take it away. But then he adds, nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. So we're going to take a look at how we try to control and run our lives, and at the same time pray they will be done, and we got to say, wait a minute, that's got to line up with God's will. And, right. and yep. So we're going to work through that, how we can line that yep. up. And I think yeah. sometimes we think, oh, if I go to God, I'll, I'll get something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it's more like we go to God mm -hmm. to pray, not, yeah. not about, well, okay, God, yeah. how are you going to use me? Yeah. But how can I use you? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then sometimes Guilty. we go to God and then we say, uh, God, this is my will, but that will be done. But, you know, I would like to see... Your will be my will, and it's yeah. it's it's opposite. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. one of the key verses for this week is yet not what I will, but what you will. Uh -huh. As we've said, that's oh. from Mark fourteen verse thirty six. Phil, the other day we had chapel upstairs, me and the, and the DCPS, the daycare preschool, and the sun was beaming through the windows, and we were just going yay! And I said, you know what that means? And they said, what? And I said. It's almost playground time. That's right. And one little kid said, but it's not done yet. Oh, it, oh. <laughs> so, but it is yeah. now. That's right. It is now. That's right. Playground. <laughs> it's complete. And the concrete has been poured. Everything's in place. Good. Just a few smaller add-on items and fixes that need to be made. Yeah. And so now I can tell the kids, it's ready for me. And they'll say, you're too big. But oh, yeah, indeed. And indeed. Uh, I'm excited about that. And uh, Tammy told Billy today that the contractor said that Tuesday is the target date for completing. So that bit of good news means that we can go out there next week when I get back from Philadelphia and uh, you and I can give it a test because right. I know you're gonna be away, yep. I'm gonna be away. Uh, when we get back, we are gonna take off the winter coats yeah. because the sunshine is gonna be 85 yeah. degrees yep. and we'll go down the slide. So I let's, can't wait to get out there. Let's manifest that. Yeah. We're going to do that. And it's going to be on 411 because Billy is going to record that. And maybe we'll get Billy down the slide too. Maybe. 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 Have to see. Billy's shaking his head no, so I don't know. So we'll see. Was he? I didn't see it. No, he's just sitting there sleeping back there, I think. <laughs> Good morning to you, Heather. Hey, Pastor. And yeah. speaking of top of the morning, today is St. Patrick's Day. Indeed it is. And I thought that I'd share a little bit about what St. Patrick's Day is actually celebrating. It's not all leprechauns and pots of gold. Is it anything to do with green beer or corned beef and pastrami and... No. Oh, okay. Well, no. well I guess you better tell us what it's really about then. Yeah. I actually think that the historical account of St. Patrick is really cool. Um, so I'll make it. It's so kind of a long story, so I'm going to make it short. Um, for Billy, say thank you, Pastor. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. Sweet. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll be awake. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. All right. Anyway, um, so as you probably already know, Saint Patrick was actually born in Britain. Sure was. To a wealthy family. Yes. And when he was 17, he was actually captured by a group of Irish raiders and taken into captivity in Ireland for yes, several years. And while he was there. 
he turned to God to get himself through being enslaved and captivity and what. And I've read that he prayed up to and over a hundred times a day yes. in all kinds of weather. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really cool. Yes. So he escaped and got back to Britain. And when he was there, he became ordained. Yes. And then he had some dreams calling him to Ireland and to preach to the people of Ireland mm -hmm. um, about the gospel. And so he did, and as most of you know, or a lot of people know, that the shamrock, not the clover, True. the shamrock is shamrock. actually all over Ireland, which mm -hmm. is a perfect way to explain the Holy Trinity. The black shamrock. Dark green, but thanks. It's anyway. Dark. <laughs> it's actually dark green. It looks black to me, but it's actually dark green. It is a really dark green. green. The shamrock. Yeah. You're going to explain well, the meaning I'm, behind the shamrock. Yes, but you're going to like... Well, it's kind of like me trying to explain something in the children's box and on Sunday morning, but uh, yeah. I'm going to sit back and say, okay, Heather. No, no, I'll this, start it and you finish it. Your, this is in your children's mystery <laughs> box. Oh, no. Now you explain it and connect it to God. Okay, so this is so cool. So there is one stem that grows up, mm -hmm. and out of that one stem grows three mm -hmm. leaves, mm -hmm. and get this, the leaves are heart-shaped. They like, are if indeed. that is not gospel packed, yeah, right? right? Mm -hmm. That is so cool. So, now, take it away, Pastor. As I tell my kids that we have one God, yet there are three persons of the Godhead. And it's, as you said, it's kind of cool that they're in heart shapes. And you can see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yet they're all together on one stem, which is one God. So he used that to teach the kids about God being three, but yet one. And the hearts remind me of how much God cares about us yeah. and all that Jesus went through yeah. to save us. So yeah. it's pretty yeah. cool, I think. It, it, it's really cool. <laughs> so what else you got, Heather? Okay, so uh, as you know, Easter oh, lilies. Oh, yes. There's a new update, so you can either go to the bulletin board mm -hmm. uh, in the fellowship hall and fill out an envelope and put it in the offering plate, da 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 or you can scan the QR code and fill out the form mm -hmm. and then drop your payment in the office. Open your, open your phone. <laughs> if you have an app like I do, it says QR barcode scanner or just your camera. I'll use my app if I have an app. And then you just go to there and you zap that right there, hit that right there, and it goes right to the site. Easy as that. Easy as that. Yep. So get yeah, right there. Easter Lily sign up. Mm -hmm. Easy as that. Yep. Yeah. Another thing, directory. So a lot of people have mentioned that yes. they want a directory, and that is awesome. Mm -hmm. So we're printing up mm, about around 20 yep. each week yep. and handing them out. Um, no worries if we run out and you don't get one, I'll print more next week. All you have to do is see an usher on Sunday morning and they will get it for you. One last thing. I have a feeling this has to do with something that I keep announcing people to do on you Sundays. Do. And you're getting a little bit annoyed with me and so you change no, the bulletin. Just Gives yeah. me ideas. It gives you so idea. every Sunday you say, cut out the yeah. prayer <laughs> list. And yes. even I'm sitting there going, hey, that's a really great idea. <laughs> and then, you know. So I thought, hey, let's make it really easy. Yeah. So on the last page of the inside of the bulletin is the prayer list mm -hmm. with a, a little cut line that you can cut it out. On the other side is the weekly schedule. Like, how cool is that? And we've divided the prayers into two sections. Yes, we have. So yes, we have. do you want to talk about that? Uh, sure. Um, our prayer list, as you well know, um, is, has been getting longer and oh, longer. Very. And uh, which is a good thing because God tells us to pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a good thing. Um, but there are names of people on here that requested long time prayers. They yes. might be dealing with uh, an illness that goes on for months and maybe even, even a year or two. Mm -hmm. And that, that's good and we should keep them in prayer. And so what I ask Heather to do is to divide the names into two prayer lists. Um, one is to says, please pray for, and these are requests with people who has upcoming surgery or people who just came out of surgery, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. The other list, as you see in the bulletin, says extended prayers. Mm -hmm. And these are people who are dealing with life issues that mm -hmm. go on for quite some time. Uh, like I said, maybe three, four, five months, six months, mm -hmm. maybe even a year. year or two. And so, yeah, a year or two. So mm -hmm. you see the names down there of people who are having difficulties day to day mm -hmm. and need our continued mm -hmm. prayers. Mm -hmm. So we we put it into two different groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's the explanation of those two groups. But I, what I really like about this is you can take this home 
you got the prayers, you got the calendar. Mm -hmm. So that's a really excellent idea. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Heather. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. On Wednesday, our His Hands Lenten series continues. Mm -hmm. We're scheduled to examine the resurrecting hands of Jesus. Matthew 9, 19 through 25 serves as the background for this topic. When I laid out the series uh, back in January, maybe December, maybe even before that, um, I was focusing on the hands of Jesus and what they all have done for us. And we looked at healing and inviting and providing. And now uh, as we get closer to Easter and Holy Week and Easter, uh, those hands were hands that were resurrecting. And uh, that's our focus, hands that resurrect. There's a slight change of plans for our services starting yes. this Wednesday. Pastor Carney's gonna be away for a couple weeks with Donna for her jaw implant replacement. And while he's away, Pastor Mike Wakeland will be filling in on the 22nd. Pastor Bruckner's gonna return for service on the 26th. Mm -hmm. And finally, Pastor Work's gonna be filling in on the 29th. Yeah. We'll still have our congregational dinner for this Wednesday starting at 5 p.m. with barbecue meatballs mm -hmm. served by church council. And then as usual, service is gonna begin at 6 p.m. And I heard that Barb is going to make her world famous macaroni and cheese. Now, if you have not had her macaroni and cheese, she adds some, well, I can't give away her secret ingredients, although I know them, but she adds some secret ingredients and her macaroni and cheese is out of this world. I can eat bowls full, it's that good. So you don't wanna miss the dinner. I believe her macaroni and cheese will make an appearance. Five o'clock. We're entering another time of the year where the lives of our youth seem to fill up with so many events. Oh, yes. Yet they still find time to help serve our church. During Lent, they've been helping out by ushering our midweek services. Mm -hmm. And on Easter morning, they will be preparing and serving our Easter breakfast between our 7 a.m. service and our 10 a.m. service. Now, I know that a lot of them will be away this Easter. It so happens that spring break falls the same time Holy Week does. So, here's the thing. Hallie and Billy would like to seek the help from some of our younger members, like my kids, my confirmation kids, and maybe some in the Sunday school to help us out with this. So, you as parents out there, if you have one of my kids, confirmation kids or a Sunday school kid that you think is old enough to help out, please let Billy or Hallie know because they definitely would take your help. Well, Pastor, sometimes in life things change and uh, well, we go with the flow, right? We go with the flow. So one of those things that has changed is there will not be yeah. a bowling event this Saturday, March 18th, yeah. unfortunately. A little mix up with the bowling alley across mm -hmm. the street. We love them, but they double booked us. So we had to get the boot because they've got a tournament. So yeah. no bowling event right now. We'll talk about whether or not we're gonna make that up in the future. We're gonna try to do something, of course, yeah. to, to get the camaraderie of the church going yeah. again. but. Right now, again, no bowling event coming up this Saturday. We didn't get the boot, we got the bowling shoe. That's right. Yeah. Boot. And I know a lot of people, I know my grandkids are looking forward to it, and uh, I think it'll just be a good time for us to spend family time together. So right. uh, I know you're sad, but uh, here, do, do me a flavor. Take the time that you were going to spend with your family and go ahead and still spend that time with your family, but just do yeah. something else. Yep. I'm going to do that with my grandkids, and I hope you do it with your kids, and you guys do it with your kids or grandkids. Family time, it's important. One thing that we've talked about here on 411 um, was the offerings that uh, we received during our midweek Lenten services. And uh, we've been entertaining suggestions from the congregation, and at our last council meeting, as you well know, and we've talked about all the suggested opportunities and, and, and groups and missions, and there were some really good ones. And uh, we gave it to God in prayer, and uh, we came up with two awesome mission opportunities. And I am so thrilled because both of them, there's a direct link between two awesome families of the congregation. The first one is Legacy of Blessings, which Phil and Melissa uh, are the co-founders of, and I'll give Phil some time in a few in a moment to talk about Legacy of Blessings, because I think it's awesome. Thank you. And I said it in worship last night, and mm -hmm. I say it again here live, that 
I'm on your team. You need me? Give me a call. You Thank know you. where I am. You know where I live. So Thank give you. me a call. The second one is Soda. S O D A. And uh, that's headed up by Whitco Academy. And I found out last night, I mentioned Brooke is heavily involved in that. I found out last night that Brooke actually told me that she's responsible for the setting up of a soda chapter at her academy. Mm -hmm. And it's the first high school in Indiana to have this. Very cool. Now, what is soda? Student Organ Donation Advocacy. And it deals with, with life-saving organ transplant, organ donations and transportation. So yeah, yeah. kind of cool. Awesome. So, so spend the moments with us, and uh, I'm not gonna interview you, but uh, just share uh, what's in your heart and Melissa's heart yep. about Legacy of Blessings. Yeah, so Legacy of Blessings found, uh, Adoption Foundation uh, is the name that we came up with. So as you guys know, our third daughter, Chloe, is adopted. Uh, we did not have to go through an agency to adopt her because we actually had a family friend reach out to us, but in a lot of cases, almost all cases, if you want to adopt a child from birth, then you have to go through an agency. There's attorney fees and agency fees and home studies. Uh, it can be extremely expensive. We're talking thirty to fifty thousand wow. dollars to adopt a child. Yeah. So uh, I've mentioned before. I know you talked about it at church the other day, but there's over a hundred million orphans worldwide. Mm. Okay, we have thirty-eight percent of Christians who have said, you know, I, I would consider adopting but actually only 5% of those Christians actually take the step to adopt. And a big portion of that, big reason, is because it's so expensive. Mm. Not everybody's got thirty dollars or $50,000 sitting around. It's a lengthy time frame. Mm. From the time that you say, yes, I want to adopt, to the time where you actually get the child, you're talking sometimes one to three years. Mm. It is not something that just happens overnight. Um, so it can be a draining and mm. exhausting and very financial uh, financially exhausting situation as well because um, of the situation that has to take place. It is so much more than just saying, I want to adopt. A lot of steps. So what we have done and what we are creating right now is the Legacy of Blessings Adoption Foundation. And this foundation is going to help to raise money and raise awareness for adoption, but also provide resources um, and spiritual growth for families that are looking to adopt. Uh, so we won't be an agency where people can come to us to um try to adopt a child, but what we're going to be is funding. Okay. So they can come to us and say, hey, we're in the process of adopting. Mm -hmm. We will set them up with an application uh, to where it goes through an organization called Lifesong for Orphans, mm -hmm. where they do the application process for us. And then they recommend to us, yes, we recommend you give this much money to this family. And then we as a board have the decision of what we actually want to give, what we give. We can be more or less, but we get that recommendation. Mm -hmm. So, And we also, of course, want to provide resources and, and prayers as well to those who are interested in adopting and want more information. I don't know, Pastor. I'm not sure what we're doing here. Neither do I. I love Jesus, but am I the right one to be telling people about him? Phil, feed his sheep. Okay, whatever that means. What I'm trying to say is that I've done things that I'm not proud of, and I know that it was outside of his commands. Phil, tend his lambs. There you go again. Avoiding the topic. You know, I love Jesus and try to live a God-pleasing life. Feed his sheep. Yeah. Okay. What is it with the livestock talk? <laughs> Trying to tell me I need to become a farmer for Jesus? <laughs> Not really. When Jesus took on your sins. He did so on the cross. He removed your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. And you don't need to worry about them anymore. Just repent and believe and then just tell others what he has done for you. All right, I think I know what you're trying to do there now. Yeah. yeah. Members of his flock out there that need to be fed and the love that I feel inside that is from him needs to be shared. Absolutely. And when we share our experiences, we don't need to worry about what we've done because it's not about us. We don't point others to ourselves, look at us, when we spread the gospel, we are pointing other people to, to Jesus, the perfect person, Jesus. So often uh, in life, we think it's about us. And we point others to us and, and say, look what I've done. Or when it comes to Bible, we say, listen to what I got to say. It's not about us. It's listen to what God has to say. And uh, so let's stop right here and um, 
just pray about that, that we take the focus off of ourselves and we put it onto Jesus. As Jesus said three times, you know, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, take care of my family, take care of my flock. And so it's about him and his people. It's not about us. So uh, let's get that in the right direction and pray for God's spirit to get us there. Father, we just thank you for the beauty of this day and the awesomeness of your world, your creation, and the awesomeness of your love. And Father, help us to put that focus back on you. And I say back on you, Father, because so often in life, we put it on ourselves. Look what I have done. Listen to what I have to say. It's not about us. And God, help us to, to put the focus back on Jesus with your spirit, that we point others to Jesus, where we go to our friends, our family members, our co-workers, our neighbors, whomever, and say, come with me. Allow me to introduce you to Jesus and bring them to Jesus. And Father, bless us that we, with the help of the Holy Spirit, lead others to Jesus because it's all about Him, especially Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. It's not about us. We're just a vehicle to get people to Jesus, and the Spirit is driving that car. So thank you, God. In you we pray. Amen. Amen. On Monday, the Knitters will meet at 10 a.m. There will be no women's Bible study, but there will be an elders meeting at 6 p.m. The youth group will meet over at the Annex at 6.30. The trustees will have their next meeting on Tuesday at 6 p.m. On Wednesday, the noon Bible study will continue with a discussion about last week's episode. Our next congregational Lenten dinner is at 5 p.m. on Wednesday with service following at 6 p.m. And the middle cross practices on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Well, Phil, I'm out of here. Um, he can wrap things up. I'm out of here. Okay. Thanks for watching. And we look forward to seeing you in worship, of course. Please like and share this video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification button so that you're notified when we load any new content. If you have any questions about Redeemer or have some suggestions, please contact the church office at churchoffice at redeemerwarsaw.org, or you may contact any of us with the addresses listed on the screen. Visit us online at RedeemerWarsaw.org or on Facebook at Redeemer Warsaw. Thanks for watching, and until next time, may the Lord be with your spirit and grace be with you.